Retro Night Show, Nitro, number 87, also May 12th. They had Michael Buffer doing introductions for the show for absolutely no reason. And in hindsight, he introduced the show, and then he left. Never seen again. Hey, they had money. I'll say. Randy Savage and Elizabeth came out. He did not introduce them. <laughs> Buffer's right there. They just come out with no intros. Savage has no crutches. He's moving fine. He kicks Buffer out of the ring, and then announces, I have healed! Yeah! More bad guys need to do this when they come back from injury. So last week, he says he slapped DDP so hard that Paige is now on crutches. And if Paige is there tonight, Savage is going to slap him again. He left. And Paige wasn't there. No. Last we saw Macho Man. No. And the announcers promised that Sting would cut a promo later. And Before I they go to the announcers, they played one bar of Hoovy's music and then shut it off. I noticed that. I thought that was newsworthy on this show. <laughs> it may have been on, on this episode. <laughs> on any other episode, I wouldn't have mentioned it, but I was desperate for things to talk about. <laughs> so they promised... Sting will cut a promo later. I was skeptical. Yeah, you know, it was funny. It's like the announcers say, Eric Bischoff has promised that he will interview Sting later. And Bobby Heenan's like, Sting hasn't spoken in over a year. He's going to speak tonight? And the announcer's like, yep, that's what Eric Bischoff says. And I was like, you three dumb shits. Yeah, the, I mean, the only three on. people in the world who believe Sting was going to cut a promo here were uh, uh, Shivani, Heenan, and Zabisco. Hooven to Guerrero versus Ultimo Dragon. Let's talk about the real best part of this match. Mm -hmm. William Regal? Yes. They go backstage, and William Regal is in a sweater. An yeah. amazing sweater. A sweater that looks like he was at Value Village <laughs> at their sale rack. And there's a sweater, and he thought, I will wear this to Nitro. Now, I can't even describe this sweater. It was the least intimidating sweater. Yeah. And first off, sweaters aren't very intimidating. So let's imagine the least intimidating sweater you can imagine. He's wearing this thing as he does a promo saying, it is time for me to leave the aristocracy behind. I am going back to my Blackpool carny roots, and I'm going to beat some ass. Like I used to beat up men twice my age when I was 15. And he says this in this sweater. I believed him. I did too. That's what made no sense. So, uh... I, apparently I'm, the, apparently I'm the only one, I had a lot of buffering issues during this match. You were the only one. So, all I can tell you, from what I saw, it looked like a very fun video game match with tons of cool moves and little to no selling. They were both brawling on the floor when Sonny, Sonny Ono went after Hoovy. So Hoovy grabs Sonny, this lets Dragon hit a kick from the apron. To which Bobby Heenan replies, blindsided him! What a great cheap shot that was! <laughs> Bobby Heenan, an admirer of a well done cheap shot. Did a slingshot suplex or a slingshot drop kick to the floor that grazed Hoovy. Sort of, yeah. Yes, I hear it too, Brian. There's birds or something outside. So, Ono hit some kicks. Dragon hit the top rope Rana and the Dragon Sleeper for the win. Best Hoovy match I've seen in a very long time on Nitro. Yeah, nothing got screwed up. Ric Flair, Kevin Green, and Roddy Piper came out for a promo. I am now sick of this trio. I can't wait for this pay-per-view to be over, so I don't ever have to see them again. Oh, man. On the scale of Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, Kevin Green promos, this was fine. Sure. That's because they only had a second to talk each. I love when Kevin Green says, I have never lost in Charlotte. I am undefeated. There are three things that are for sure. Death. Then he starts reaching for the mic, and Gene starts to prevent him. But Kevin Green will have none of it. Mm -hmm. He literally pries the microphone out of Gene's hand so that he can say, Taxes? And then he adds, In Charlotte at Slamboree, I am going to break my foot off in your ass. Stealing Brett's line. Not nearly as well. And Gene sold it. Gene sold it. He goes, I'm not <laughs> sure you can say foot on TV. That's yes. right. So Piper's rambling on about Tyrannosaurus's. Thank God the NWO appeared on the screen to cut, to interrupt them. They ran them down. Six claimed he was boinking Flair's wife. They said the old men were whiners. And they had plenty to whine about after Sunday. Because the match is now no DQ and no count out. To which the baby faces were like, cool. So that was that. It's fine. Steve and Michael versus Dean Malenko. <laughs> well, this is not amazing. <laughs> it was something. 
let's let's recap the match one more time. It is Dean Malenko against Steve Mongo McMichael in a match. There was a noticeable size discrepancy here. Am I wrong, Vinny? No, you got it all right. When you say it, you realize how ridiculous this was on the format sheet. (laughs) And it came off like you'd expect. No. Let me recap some of this stuff here. Mongo goes for a body slam. And as he lifts up Dean, Dean's legs take out the ref. Yeah. Mongo then executes a body slam on the great Dean Malenko, covers him, and Dean can't kick out. Mongo is beating him with a body slam. Ref is down. Am I wrong, Vinny? You're no, looking you, at me you, like I'm making this up. You're not wrong, but you're, you're, there was more stuff that happened before this. Okay, go for it. Nothing yeah. mattered after that. <laughs> well, maybe that's true. <laughs> yes, Mongo did have the win with a body slam. In hindsight, I didn't... I'll admit... I didn't realize that because I was still marveling at how badly they botched the first time they tried the interference spot. Because Dean goes to whip Mongo in, and Mongo very clearly has no idea what he's doing. And so first he's trying to get Dean to stop, but then Dean whips him in, so Mongo says, oh well. He does the biggest, goofiest lope across the ring you ever saw, and he like throws on the brakes and throws a boot or something. Until the next match, by the way. And, 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 and then they just go back and they do the exact same spot again, and they get the Jared interference thing in there. So then, yes, the referee gets knocked out by body slam. Mongo tries to win with a body slam and apparently would have won with a body slam, but there is no ref. So out comes Reggie White. Just uh, happened to be there. Sure. Uh, Jarrett helped Mongo cut him off briefly, but then Reggie made his comeback and laid Mongo out with a splash. <laughs> he leaps in the air and he does not know his own power. Because he just kept going up for a while. Yes. And then he overshoots his target, yeah. and he lands with his thighs and knees on Mongo. Yeah. Who sold it like he's dead. <laughs> he didn't get up for a long time. No. A 300-pound man had just landed thighs first on him. He needed on his thigh pads. Basically, he did. Uh, yeah. Mongo needed him to have the thigh yes. pads on. So, Malenko cradles Mongo. The ref recovers and counts three. Gene then interviews Reggie on the floor. Before I get to that, I want to say one more positive thing about this match. (laughs) When it happened, I just wrote down everything that happened. Like, it was an easy, simple story. Ref bump, Reggie comes in, runs wild, beats up Mongo, knocks Jared off the apron, Malenko covers for the pin. You know how many matches I've watched where I have to rewind it three times to write down every goddamn thing they do in the finishing sequence? True. They just did it. It was easy to digest, and it was great. And the fans were going crazy for Reggie, chanting his name. So Reggie cuts his promo saying, Mongo, you can say whatever you want about me. That's fine. But you leave the fans out of it. The fans of Wisconsin. All my great fans in Wisconsin. And Gene, they're in Baltimore. And Gene pulls the mic down and says, and Baltimore. And Gene says, and Reggie says, and Baltimore, and Philadelphia, and Tennessee where I played college. You leave all that out of it. And he points to Mongo and says, I'm going to prove that Green Bay's better than Chicago. And the fans of Baltimore went, yay? (laughs) But it was a great promo. It was such an awesome localized promo on a national television show in in the wrong market. (laughs) (laughs) Who cares? It was great. It was great. He was so good that the people didn't boo him. That's true. Like they respected him and loved him so much that him talking about. A rivalry between two teams they don't give a shit about. They accept it. A thousand miles away. Yeah. Wisconsin. He kept bringing up Wisconsin. Yeah. Like, dude, we're on national television, guy. No one gives a shit about Wisconsin. Oh, Brian. It's a lovely place. I'm, hey, I didn't say... I said none of these people gave a shit about <laughs> Wisconsin. I love Wisconsin. Lee Marshall did the road report. Oh, God. I bring this in this every week, and most of the week it's a, most weeks it's a waste of time. But this week... Was an exception. So Lee says he's in North Carolina. He's at some fancy estate somewhere. He says, I'm sitting here on... In a th- North Carolina? They have a coastline. They had... Yeah, Brian. There's a lot of nice places in North Carolina. Ridiculous. So you don't like Wisconsin. <laughs> you don't like the Carolinas. <laughs> no, I'm Washington all the way. Forget these other states. He says he's sitting on 8,000 acres. And he Are says, we sure Wisconsin is a state? He says, I saw a sign coming in that said, no shirt. 
no shoes, no weasels. That was his joke. That was the best. He had all week to think of this joke. That's the best he came up with. And as soon as he's done, Heenan says, you know, the funny thing is, Lee Marshall also sits on 8,000 acres. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Heenan, in five seconds, destroyed Lee Marshall, who had a week to think of something. That is a good one. They send that man a check. Yeah. Every week. It's got numbers on it. He was the voice. It's valid. Of Unbelievable. What's his face? Tony the Tiger. Tony the Tiger. And so he was famous. And so they thought, let's give him money. No one knew he was the voice of Tony the Tiger. It, no, no fans did. That's not what matters. Eric did. I see. I, okay. All right. And he had a wrestling background. But they, still. They did work together in the AWA. Oh, well, he's not great. That's for sure. Oh, great. <laughs> Scotty Riggs versus Wrath. We had seen Wrath many times before. This is the first time James Vandenberg actually gave him a name. He called him The Wrath. Did he call him The Wrath? But no one else did. Ever again. Scotty Riggs was in a tag team, the American Males. Yes. They broke up. Yes. He did absolutely nothing, and he's a great worker. He comes out. They gave him pyro. Yeah. Just because they had money to literally blow. They had a lot of money here. And he still has the American Males theme song. It's the best part. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's just the American Male now. So he lost. Wrath squashed him in one with a urinagi. Then Glacier's light show went off. He appeared on the stage. He stared down Mortis. He stared down Wrath. They stared him back. And then nothing happened. Conan and Hugh Morris versus Ice Train and Alex Wright. I wrote Alex Riley instead of Alex Wright. Alex Wright's better. Ice Train wreck this week, by the way. By the way. Ice Train and Alex Riley are a team. Yeah. And they came out to Alex Wright's shitty music. <laughs> that was what I got out of this. <laughs> I thought of that. I was thinking, shouldn't Ice Train and Glacier be a team? Mm. You'd think. You would think. Conan's music, by the way, he's rapping about the Dungeon of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with that? I don't know. In storyline, he was a member of the Dungeon of Doom, so why would he not rap about it? Rappers rap about their life circumstances. I suppose that's true. He's in the Dungeon of Doom. So you would be okay with The Undertaker coming out and having a hip-hop song because he's in the he's in the, the dark well, side, the Dungeon of Doom. It's different, Craig. Conan Whatever. is a thug. He's just in the Dungeon of Doom. I see. Still dumb. Take Undertaker's your- a dead man. Take would have a country song. You'd have Johnny Cash. He'd have a country song. He'd have Johnny Cash. Some classical music. Something you'd play in a morgue. That would be about Paul Bearer. If it had words. Anyway. Yes, yeah, Tom. <laughs> so, the gimmick here was that Alex is a terrible partner. He abandoned Ice Train to start. And they double teamed him. But as soon as Ice took control, Wright tagged himself in. Took control. What? <laughs> Ice Train. I love the man. He okay. sucked this week. He is in there with Hugh Morris, who one day would go on to run the training in WWE Developmental. They have one spot, and that is that Ice Train is on the apron, and Hugh Morris is mad because Alex Wright slapped him. And he's going to pull the ropes, and Ice Train is going to be, I guess, slingshot into the ring. Is that the idea? I don't know what happened on that one. They tried at least five times. And to their credit, they never gave up. <laughs> like John Cena. I didn't make it. I'll try it again. I didn't make it again. I'll try it again. I didn't make it again. I'll try it again. I didn't make it again. One more time. Ah, I got in there. They just kept because it was important i guess that he gets slingshot into the ring why i don't know because it led to nothing but it was so important to them that they would not give up and then ice train is knocked on his ass and hugh morris goes up for his moonsault and hugh morris climbs all the goddamn way up to the top rope before he notices ice train's in the wrong spot now it was Ice Train's fault, but it's not like Ice Train moved. Hugh Morris slammed him, I guess expecting that Ice Train would move himself. Mm. Ice Train, a loyal soldier, just laid there. Why didn't Hugh- Conan move him? Hugh Morris goes to the top rope. He looks down. He realizes the man is in the wrong spot. So he climbs down. 
he puts him in the right spot, but then he just breaks. Yeah. I'm and not. after after he repositions him for the moonsault, he just gives up and says, Conan, just do your hold. Yeah, he dropped the elbow on him, and then Conan put him in his move. There was another point in this match where Hugh Morris was whipping him from ring post to ring post. I don't know what happened if they were doing a switch and somebody forgot, but it ended up with Ice Train running backwards from mid-ring to the other side of the post. It's ridiculous. I don't think this tag team is going to work out well, said Larry Z. As Alex is dancing on the floor as his partner's beaten up. There could be many interpretations of that statement. Well, that too. All I know is at the end, everyone in the building was completely confused, except Alex Wright, who was standing in the aisle way talking about his beautiful body. This was a disaster. It was very terrible. My favorite wrestler failed me <laughs> spectacularly. If only they had played his music. No. <laughs> he didn't deserve it. <laughs> I was say, maybe, maybe that's why he had a bad night. Could have been. It threw his rhythm off. Alex Wright's music will throw your rhythm off. Let me tell you. They're doing a DDP video package, but they interrupted it to send a camera running backstage. There they found the Outsiders and Six storming down a hallway, and they showed Piper down on the floor clutching his bad hip. This was worse than the zooming in and out that they do on Raw. A cameraman running with the camera on his shoulder. Yeah, for a, for a while. Yeah. It's a big building. It's like the Blair Witch Project. Eric Bischoff came out for the promo. He introduced Sting... And you won't believe this, but fake Sting came out. And Shivani said, Ah, oh, we should have known. To which Larry said, That's not Sting. That's Stink. Larry's a clever man. Yeah. But Shivani says, Yeah, we should have known. Damn right you should have. We knew. So the fans were demanding Sting, and I don't know what was going on. They were all looking up to one corner of the building, and then nothing happened up there, so there must have just been a fight. Well, no, I think there was probably... Like, an actual production guy in the rafters, and everyone decided he was Sting. I see. He's just like... Okay. Not me. So, fake Sting, who usually puts on a trench coat and makeup and then acts nothing like Sting. He's a jolly happy guy. Here, he's all moody, hanging his head, carrying his bat. Is it that hard to nod? Oh, well, he, he should have done a bad job. He had to be fake Sting. Everything about him had to be phony and low rent for this to work. So Sting or Bischoff asks, "Have you been compared to Hulk Hogan?" And Fake Sting nods. And Bischoff says, "Is it true you will never accomplish what Hollywood Hogan has done in this industry?" And Fake Sting nods again. I was nodding too, by the way. <laughs> this goes on for a while. Real Sting comes out out of, uh, out of the entrance way. By the way, the normal stage entrance. Bischoff hides behind Fake Sting, who is. Swinging his bat like Barry Bonds. He is not backing down. He is, uh, he's ready to go. Then Real Sting gets in the ring and shows he has a bat of his own. And now Fake Sting is scared. <laughs> so Sting teases a bat shot. Fake Sting flinches. Sting punches him and hits a reverse DDT. He turns his back on Eric. Eric flees to the crowd. The show goes off the air. And that was the go-home segment for the pay-per-view. It was believable, Vinny, because... Let's say that I was a trained swordsman, yep. and you were playing me for Halloween, sure. and you were threatening people with a sword. Yeah. Then I show up with a sword, yeah. and even though we both have a sword, you know you're fucked. Oh, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Because Fake Sting realized, I have a bat, but this man is a trained batsman. Yes. Yes. Sure. No, I, 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 I am fine with this segment. I'm bewildered it was the go-home segment for the pay-per-view. It was. This was the go-home for Slambery. None of these men are on the show. <laughs> Why? Maybe they didn't trust Flair and Roddy and Kevin Green to go on last, which is believable. Sure. Yeah, this is boring. <laughs> it's a waste of time show. <laughs> they literally are finding ways to just drag out this Sting thing to Starcade, And we're in May. Yeah. That's a long way to go. That's the show, everybody. Well, those two shows we watched. Brian, don't you have an email you need to read, by the way? No. It's from Scott. Hall? Mr. High. Dude, something's up with my email because I don't have anything. And I have not been getting a lot of emails in the last couple of days, so. Okay, I got this right here. 
Believe it or not, we are already planning for WrestleMania next year. Still got a few rooms left at the WrestleMania Hotel available. You can plug this on the show. Go to f4whotel at yahoo.com. Email Scott. They have uh, official F4W hotels in Orlando at the Rosen Inn Point Orlando, located in the famous and on International Drive, excuse me, uh, 65 bucks a night, which is awesome. Uh, it's about 40% savings, and it's two blocks from the convention center where WWE Access is, and two blocks from the WrestleCon Hotel at the Hyatt Regency. There Got you. that, everybody? Thank you, Greg. Scott, if he emailed me, let me know what email you sent it to because I think my email has been acting up. I got a song. I think. That is from that SmackDown taping where Ric Flair decided to randomly tell Natty to kill herself. I see. Edited it off the show. Apparently you can't say that today in WWE. All right, everybody. That is it for today. We'll be back on Thursday after we all attend NXT, which somehow is going to fit into the Paramount. I don't know how. Actually, still tickets available. That's even more I, astonishing. I bought one this morning. I couldn't even believe that. It's but, in the uh, third balcony, I think. Yeah. So check it out, everybody. That's it. We'll talk to you again after a while. Good night. Bye.